Hi everyone! Today I wanted to show you the technique I use in my turtle and seahorse patterns to make pieces of the critters curve and curl. Uh, this technique involves alternating rows of slip stitches with rows of single crochet to sort of like crunch the one side of the critter resulting in a smooth curve without having to use sewing at the end like this. This is not sewn. I can pull it apart but it goes back to the curve at the end. Uh, so I'm going to demonstrate this first on the turtle for two reasons. One, the rounds are bigger so that it will be easier to see what I'm doing. And two, because the turtle only uses one row of slip stitches at a time. The seahorse uses more, so I'll demonstrate what it looks like after the turtle. So I have my started turtle here, and I've just completed round 10 of the head, which is the last round in the pattern without slip stitches. Important note, make sure you are crocheting in both the front and back loops. Some people crochet just into the front loop of a stitch like this, where you only grab the front loop. Don't do this. Grab both loops. This technique does not work if you only crochet in one or the other. So make sure you have both. So round 11 tells me to do one slip stitch, six single crochet, and then four slip stitches. Uh, you can crochet these normally like this. One slip stitch and one two, three, four, five, six single crochet, and one, two, three, four slip stitches. So now I have completed round 11. Uh, a slip stitch has no height, so if you hold the piece this way, you can kind of tell that where the slip stitches are, it's shorter. So we've sort of slanted the area of our piece a little bit, which is good. That's what we want. That's where the crunch comes from. Uh, so uh, now round 12 tells me to do six uh, single crochet. Uh, so instead of putting our hook under the two loops of that first slip stitch, we are going to instead insert our hook into the single crochet from round 10 under both. So you can see it's gonna end up looking a little bit bulky, which is fine. And the single crochet that results is going to look taller in comparison. Uh, then we are doing more single crochet and these, since they go into single crochet, are, can just be crocheted normally into the tops until we reach the next set of slip stitches. So we should have four single crochet left to do. And again, instead of going under the slip stitch, I'm gonna go into the top of the single crochet from the previous round four times. So now it almost looks like one round has been eaten by another. You can see it looks like round here, round here, and then they kind of combine into one round. And uh, this is what is going to cause that crunch along the side or that curve. So this gets more obvious the more rounds that you go. So the next round is again a slip stitch round. So I do one slip stitch and six single crochet. And then four slip stitches again. So when we start the next round, we again, instead of going into our slip stitch, go into the top of the single crochet from the previous round, making a big fat single crochet. 
and then single crocheting normally into the single crochets from the previous round. And then again, when we hit slip stitches, going all the way underneath to the previous stitch for another four. So my yarn ball advances slowly. So you can start to see here that we've started to get a curve going at the uh, neck of the turtle. So for the seahorse's tail, we need a much more pronounced curve. So the way I did that is there are more rows of slip stitching between the single crochet rounds. So when you do that, that means you single crochet over all of the slip stitch rounds at once. This here then is the started seahorse tail where I've done rounds one and two. The instructions for rounds three and four say to do three slip stitches followed by three single crochet. So round three is going to be three slip stitches. One, two, three, and then three single crochet. One, two, and three. Uh, a lot of people often have trouble with the seahorse tail. It is very difficult to work with as it is very tiny, only six stitches around for, uh, I think the first 11 or 12 rounds. Uh, so yeah, that, that doesn't help matters, but it's how you get a nice pretty seahorse tail. So that's where we're at. So now round four, when we do the first three slip stitches, like with the turtle, we are going to be crocheting into the last set of single crochet. So in this case, we'll be crocheting into the top of round two, not under the slip stitches from round three. So in this case here, the top of round two is actually here. So I'm gonna go in and slip stitch one and go into the next one, slip stitch two, try to get that tail out of the way, into the next one, slip stitch three, And then three regular single crochet. So again, I just crochet those normally. One, two, and three. So there we go. You can start to see the definite angle being created there already. Uh, it's going to start looking really messy because the slip stitches don't actually go on top of each other they sort of start going in front of each other. So you can see a slip stitch right here and a slip stitch right here. And that is what is going to make our tail look slightly bulky, but the end effect is worth it. So round five says to do six single crochet. I'm going to insert my hook under the slip stitches from rounds three and four into the top of the single crochet from round two again. So that's under here. You can see how much is on my hook right now. That's great. Make one single crochet. And again, notice how this ends up looking a bit bulky compared to the other single crochet. Uh, it will look more bulky than with the turtle because we are crocheting over more rounds of slip stitches. So that was one in here. Two in here, three. You can see that I'm arguing with the tail a little bit. That's perfectly normal for me in crocheting. I argue with my crochet all the time. Don't get frustrated. You'll win eventually. This is four and five and six. So that is the first set of stitches to make it curve. The next three rounds, rounds six, seven, and eight, are all slip stitch rounds. Uh, so what that means is round six, seven, eight, 
and the following single crochet round, round nine, will all be going into this stitch right here. So that is four rounds going into one stitch. Uh, if you think you are going to lose track of where this stitch is, you can use a small piece of a different colored yarn to mark that spot. So I'm just going to take this guy and just kind of pull him through. As a sort of marker for me. And uh, because it's going to be three slip stitches, this, and I'll pull it through here as well. You could also do this with three separate pieces of yarn. You just want to know where you will be inserting your hook every time. So now this is where you will insert your hook for the next four rounds. So now we do one, two, oh, be careful not to grab that guy, yeah. Oops. See, they can get in the way, but eventually you don't need them because you're used to it. And three slip stitches. And then three single crochet. That's round six. Round seven is another slip stitch round. So again, I'm just gonna add my hook in where that piece of yarn is. For one slip stitch, two slip stitch, and three slip stitch, and then three single crochet normally. And now to another slip stitch around here. So notice it's going to look like I have to put my hook way far away, but that's good. That's where we want it. So first slip stitch into there. Oops. And again, making sure we don't grab that yarn. One. And three. And then three regular old single crochets. One. You can see that single crochet even looks almost vertical instead of horizontal. Because it has to bridge that gap of that height. And then finally, a regular single crochet round. So this is the last round that I need to put into this particular hole. So in, one, and three and oops make sure you're putting your next single crochet into an actual single crochet top it might look like it's disappeared a little under the monster of a single crochet you just made so just make sure you're not forgetting about him. Three. And so that is that. You can just pull now to get rid of your marker thread because you will probably want to do it again if necessary. And so you can see that it has in fact going started curving now. 
Uh, if you are doing a seahorse at this point, I recommend starting to stuff it because once it has started to really curve, stuffing it becomes really obnoxious. Do it now. So this is the technique. I use this whenever I want to curl, like if I were doing Jigglypuff's head, um, it's hair curl, whatever you want to call that. More slip stitch rounds between the single crochet rounds will result in a stronger curve, but I usually don't go above three or four because then the single crochet starts to go from bulky to weird. Uh, so feel free to leave any questions in the comments below and happy crochet.